All right, so we've gone through the Precambrian, so now it is time to go through the Phanerozoic Eon. And the Phanerozoic Eon is divided up into three eras, the Paleozoic, the Mesozoic, and the Cenozoic. And these eras, in turn, are divided into several different uh, periods, which are important to know. And we will uh, go over each of these uh, periods uh, briefly. And you can see, despite being uh, a time in Earth's history that we know a lot about and where a lot of important things in the history of life happened, the Phanerozoic is only the last little bit, the last um, 500 or so million years of Earth's uh, history. Um, the Cenozoic, where we're in now, 66-ish uh, million years, a uh, very small fraction of Earth's history. So we'll start with the Paleozoic in this recording, and then we'll do the Mesozoic next and the Cenozoic last. The Paleozoic started with the Cambrian um, period, and the Cambrian period experienced the Cambrian explosion, which um, for a while scientists thought this was the sort of first big um, explosion of multicellular life on Earth. Um, however, we now know that uh, the Ediacaran, um, at the very end of the uh, Precambrian, also saw an explosion of life, but the Cambrian explosion saw um, the forms of life that are, you know, the ancestors of much uh, life on Earth today. Uh, some of these include arthropods, which of course included trilobites, which are now extinct, but also things like mollusks. And you can see great uh, trilobite and other Cambrian fossils in the Burgess Shale, which can be found in Yoho National Park in British Columbia's Rocky Mountains. After the Cambrian came the Ordovician, which saw the great Ordovician biodiversification event, where we see a lot of pelagic uh, animals in the water column. Uh, we also see the first mosses, and the Ordovician ended with the Ordovician Silurian extinction event, which is actually the second largest uh, extinction event in Earth's history. Uh, and this was caused, there, there is debate over what caused it, but um, it is suspected to be caused due to global cooling due to the weathering of uh, silica rocks um, on Earth's surface. And it is important to note that in starting in the Ordovician and going into the Devonian, uh, we see that um, the Michigan Basin, which includes part of southern Ontario, was covered under a tropical ocean, and many of the much of the bedrock that uh, can be found in southern Ontario was formed uh, during the span of time from the Ordovician to the Devonian. Um, of course, rocks. And more northern Ontario, for example, were formed uh, much earlier in the Precambrian, the Precambrian or Canadian Shield. So after the Ordovician is the Silurian, where we see, it is a shorter period, but we do see the evolution of jawed and bony fish, uh, two important um, uh, traits that can be found in many animals today, jaws and bones. Then we get to the Devonian, which is the true age of the fishes, where we see a lot more diversity in fish life. We also see the evolution of spores and later seeds during this period, so we actually get uh, the world's first forests out of this. We also get the first insects and the first tetrapods or animals that walk on four legs. Uh, and then towards the end of the Devonian, but not at the end, we get the late Devonian extinction event, which uh, led to the extinction of the trilobites as well as other shallow marine life. And if you want to see some fossils from the Devonian, you can go to Miguasha Parc uh, National in uh, Quebec. After that, we have the Carboniferous, which saw Earth's highest levels of atmospheric oxygen, which were around 35% compared to just under 21% uh, today. This facilitated the existence of large insects, um, for example, dragonflies, which are much larger than the ones we have today. 
We also see the great Carboniferous uh, forests uh, forming, which uh, the trees were quite different from uh, the ones today. They actually had scale-like features, and once these forests died, they formed many of the world's uh, coal um, deposits. The Carboniferous also saw the formation of Pangaea, which uh, caused many uh, glaciations, which uh, eventually led to the Carboniferous rainforest uh, collapse and the death of these uh, scale trees. And if you want to see rocks from the Carboniferous in Canada, you can see them in Joggins Fossil Cliffs in uh, Nova Scotia. Uh, this is an example of one of those uh, scale tree species from the Joggins Fossil uh, Cliffs site. Now the last period in the Paleozoic is the Permian. Uh, the Permian saw a couple important events. Uh, firstly, it saw the diversification of amniotes, which are animals that can lay eggs on land, as opposed to things like amphibians, most of which lay their eggs in bodies of water. Um, and this really allowed species to be on land uh, you know, more full time and to reduce their reliance on uh, bodies of water. Uh, the Permian actually ended with a Permian-Triassic extinction event, which is the largest extinction event in Earth's history. It is nicknamed the Great Dying. And this event is uh, widely believed to be caused by the eruption of a series of, series of flood basalt volcanoes in Siberia, known as the Siberian Traps. So that is the end of the Paleozoic Era. In the next recording, we'll go over the Mesozoic, which is the age of the dinosaurs.